I'm Danielle Ronte. I'm Brian Priest. We are two artists with separate studio practices, but sometimes we get together and make shows or installations for different projects. Um, what do we do exactly with our work? I think we both in our practice separately see natural phenomenon and the way that we just kind of observe science in the world as a, as a kind of a language or a means in which that we can kind of look at other things in our lives. Um, ideas of like space or um, rocks or geology, all these different fields kind of um, leach together and mold together and mush together to kind of um, make a practice where curious people and I think we're curious at looking at the world and how it's put together in systems that are larger than ourselves and seeing that as a, a means to come together and make sculptures. We're thinking about home not as a house per se but we did like that it was in the blue house because and that's why we went with that title I think but home as in the earth the galaxy, um, your own body, those all those places can be homes. Yeah. I think home of it as this kind of elusive state of being. Yeah. That it's, um, and that's, you know, I think that if, you know, if all matter is created in Big Bang, right, then everything, all matter has, baryonic matter has, like kind of a universal moment of existence. So. No matter what stage our molecules are, either together or dead or alive or a billion years from now, we should always have a sense of home no matter where you are because everything was kind of created at the same time, I guess. So I like this idea of home is that it's, it's, it's a state of being as opposed to a place. Um, and I think some of the words, works got into that looking at different time scales. Uh, like my nerd's asteroid boat, peace for me was much about these kind of asteroid, asteroids that are kind of arrested in their development, they could have plant, formed another planet at some point. Um, they're kind of the leftover proto-material from the creation of the solar system. And I like that they're just kind of in this kind of fragile display or this fragile kind of motion that could collapse at any moment for some reason, a gravitational pull from something. Uh, and then eventually as the sun gets larger and larger and it eventually expands and overtakes the earth and everything, it's Everything goes back to the sun eventually. Um, it's kind of the spiral of the home sweet home sign. It's this idea that it's all spirals back to the sun eventually, this kind of just momentary uh, avoidance of the, of the inevitable. I, I think when we started making the show, um, we had both had very different ideas of how we wanted to take it, but we both get frustrated with each other like, how, oh, like, I don't like what you're making, I don't like what you're making, or I, I don't see how these. Really, and it's always like the last week. Yeah. It just like it starts coming together, and the last thing you made was the moon rock piece. Mm -hmm. um, I really loved. It. I thought it was like the that was the piece that I realized the show was kind of done. Was when we made that drawing because, and even by placing it next to kind of uh, my sign, which is the only work that was made really prior to the show. Right. So it was kind of nice that the, the, the oldest and the newest was put together right next to each other and they kind of encapsulated or bookended it, I think, well for us. And um, that moon rock is this idea of the truck of the moon, right? Like crashing on the earth, mm -hmm. kind of like coming back to home. Um, and that's, I guess, when we think about all directions, is this idea that in space there are no up, down, left, right. It's, it's just the vacuum of space. There is no, like, real direction. And then eventually everything kind of leads back. Leads back to someplace else. Home. Home. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that showing in this space has been really fantastic. It's such a unique space. Um, not just in the space itself, being in an old domesticated home, but like the fact that it's run by artists. Um, and I think that showing things, I mean, going back to the catalog, we were super excited because of all the great work we've seen come out of here that seems to take a chance or be experimental or just have fun with the space. And I think, you know, Danielle has, um, we kind of have different paths in our career too. Danielle has, you know, a gallery in San Francisco and um, shows in spaces that maybe don't allow her to experiment as much as maybe you like. I don't know. I don't want to speak yeah. for you, but. 
Well, yeah, it's true. It's I think I'm, you know, in a way, having being represented by a gallery might limit me in some ways of the work that I can show there. Like I can't. I mean, there's just some things I make that she's like, no, and that's fine because it's not. It doesn't go along with like her idea, like her conceptualization of what the work is that she wants to show there. So spaces like this are great to work in because then I can like do all these little ideas that I just kind of throw around and don't have any like don't have a clear direction of where they should go and that allows me to really bring it back here and make connections between other things. Yeah, for for instance like your floral uh, botanical disc. Yeah. Um, in the gallery she showed them at she showed them in the disc kind of displayed in this very almost traditional sense of seeing it as a disc. But here, you know, I had this big fake rock, mm -hmm. and she just kind of draped it over it. It was kind of a, an unapologetic kind of gesture that I think kind of took the high class, like big perfect disc that we've seen in San Francisco, and allowed it to exist on the floor and just cover a sculpture and kind of be draped. So I like that you were even uh, uh, freed yourself to kind of take something that um, you kind of loosened yourself up a bit.